plastic is an amazing invention, but it is also one of the largest environmental threats. Circular strategies have proven their potential to create climate-friendly solutions for the plastic industry, and best practices can be found all around the world, each one of them solving various steps of the value chain and reducing the carbon footprint. Think of 100% mechanically recycled food grade bottles. Simply eliminating plastics in the design phase of the value chain. Think also of new business models developing a logistic chain allowing for reuse of packaging while keeping it convenient and affordable for the consumer. Or of new models for demand and use, such as a refill model coming directly at the consumer's doorstep and leaving the choice of quantity to the consumer. But also of game-changing upcycling initiatives empowering local waste pickers and closing the loop with innovating technologies allowing to transform all type of used plastics into virgin quality PET. All these separate initiatives can make a global impact. What are the conditions for change? The conditions for opportunities to scale and for new collaborations to emerge. So, good afternoon Vietnam and good morning to all participants from the Netherlands. My name is Freek van Eyck and I'm honored to be your moderator. This webinar, jointly organized by the Netherlands Embassy in Hanoi, the Dutch Business Association Vietnam and the Netherlands Enterprise Agency, introduces opportunities for Dutch companies in the plastic waste management landscape in Vietnam. We will explore international collaboration and innovative business models. Now, this session will be available in English and in Vietnamese. So at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you will find a translation icon. Click on it and you'll find two channels. Please choose the appropriate one. Now, take good note of the house rules. In the next slide, this session will be recorded. Please mute your telephone or your microphone. Please use the Q&A button for questions to the speakers and the chat function only for communication in general and making connections in general. So remember, the Q&A button is for questions and please indicate which speaker you would like to answer the questions. We will share all presentations and answers to open questions afterwards. Now, this webinar is organized by Holland Circular Hotspot. We are a public-private initiative and a circular economy stakeholder platform. As Holland Circular Hotspot, we try to make the circular economy happen at the international level. And we create win-win business opportunities with other countries like Vietnam. For us as the Netherlands, it makes no sense to create a circular island of the Netherlands if the rest of the world doesn't follow. We need the rest of the world, we need Vietnam to follow. What we do in practice is set up incoming and outgoing missions. We share best practices from Dutch, uh, Dutch companies. We have over 150. We share the insights and tools from our knowledge institutes, and we share the hard learned lessons from our government. Uh, now, in the last year, we drafted market reports on circular economy opportunities, also one on Vietnam. We drafted more than 10 thematic reports, for instance, the one on circular plastics, which you can download for free. We'll share the link in the chat. Now, by sharing, uh, we also have an amazing network of over 20 circular economy hubs. And we think that by collectively sharing our circular knowledge, we speed up the transition and create circular opportunities. And actually, we're now very working very hard with ISPON Ren and with UNDP to set up a Vietnam circular economy stakeholder platform. Contact us if you want to know more. But about today, today we will talk about plastics with a special attention to waste management, a topic that's key for both our countries because we're both situated in a very vulnerable Delta. But at the same time, we are two very entrepreneurial nations. Uh, we have the drive and ingenuity to look for solutions. In an online two pages that we have published on our website, we have identified a range of solutions that we can work on together. Feel free to have a look at it. For today, we have a fantastic program for you with amazing speakers. As for the virtual audience present uh, today, we have over 120 registered participants. Our audience comes for 58% from Vietnam, for 27% from the Netherlands, and from 15% from all around the world. Welcome to all. Let me share the program with you. Now, after the words of introduction from the Netherlands Embassy, we will set the scene with the help of ISPONRE, NPAP, and the Dutch Business Association in Vietnam, followed by Q&A with me.
We'll cover the legal perspective, sketch the landscape of plastic waste management, and learn about doing business in Vietnam. After that, we will be exploring circular business opportunities in Vietnam with six speakers together following the value chain, coming from both the Netherlands and from Vietnam. Uh, do not forget to ask your question in the Q&A box. Uh, so do enjoy, be interactive, and without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Ivan Kutjes. Ivan, are you with us? Hello, I am with you. Can I be seen and heard? We can see you and we'll give you the floor. Yes, okay. maybe we can have full screen for Ivan. Okay, thank you very much, Freek. Dear ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> distinguished participants, good afternoon and to those calling from the Netherlands, good morning. First, let me tell you that I feel delighted and honored to participate in today's events. I hope you're all in good health and spirit. It has been my privilege to spend the past two years of my professional life in Vietnam. One of the most pressing problems in Vietnam that you and I share are widespread air and water pollution. These are not academic or long-term issues, but rather existential and immediate ones that affect the people and natural world of Vietnam in the here and the now. The far-sighted renovation Doi Moi reforms that ushered in a market economy with socialist orientation and created a multitude of benefits for the Vietnamese people also gave rise to a flourishing consumer economy without systematic measures in place to deal with the mountains of waste generated on a daily basis. Vietnam has the dark distinction of being among the fourth worst plastic polluter of the world's oceans. According to a recent World Bank, World Bank survey, plastic items accounted for 94% of all solid waste collected at 38 riverbank and coastal cities around the country, the majority of which were single-use plastics. The plastic consumption rate per capita in Vietnam rose 10 times between 1990 and 2019, in tandem with the expansion of the consumer economy. A plastic pollution-free future requires a transition from the current linear take-make-dispose model to a circular reduce, reuse, recycle economy. In a circular economy, very little plastic will be become waste or pollution. What is generally seen as a problem is in fact a solution. Waste is our greatest resource. This is advice worth heeding as soon as practicable. That's the good news. On a macro level, there are many steps we as individuals and the country as a whole can take to address the vexing problems of plastic pollution. The use of technology is key based on a sound set of rules and legislation. For its part, the government can make a huge difference by banning single-use plastics immediately, creating more incentives for entrepreneurs to establish social enterprises that address nagging environmental problems, offering financial rewards for whistleblowers, and implementing an environmental education curriculum beginning early primary school. It also should implement a mandatory national recycling program that taps into the strengths of the existing informal network and impose heavy fines on individuals and corporate polluters de to deter violations. Fortunately, the legislative uh, framework has already been laid out and procedures have been set in motion. Ladies and gentlemen, over the past year and a half, there have been many references to the coronavirus as a war against an invisible enemy. Environmental pollution, plastic pollution, is both invisible and visible and a merciless and dangerous domestic enemy that is raging war against every living being and everything in Vietnam. The country and its people must act now before it's too late. The clock is ticking. Inaction will spell disaster, not only for continued economic growth, but more importantly, quality of life for all of us. There is no second chances. There is no other choice. Pollution must be vanquished. Vietnam, and the Vietnamese people have overcome great challenges throughout their millennia long history. They face one challenge now that they also must overcome. We, the Netherlands and its experts, companies and the technological solutions on offer stand ready to meet those challenges. 
That is the reason why we gather today. Ladies and gentlemen, together we can change the fight against plastic pollution in a race to the top, ruling by example. This will be the benefit of our profit, people, and planet. I thank you for your attention and I wish you fruitful discussions. Dear Iwan, thank you so much for reminding us of the urgency of the topic and the great support also that the embassy uh, can, uh, can give in finding solutions. Uh, we are starting now with the first part of our webinar, setting the scene, and we're extremely pleased to have Dr. Nam from Ice with us. With him, we'll have a look at the legal landscape and enforcing apologies, and in just eight minutes, he will guide us through the latest developments. Dr. Nam, the floor is yours. Hello. Um, yeah, thank you so much for the great introduction. Um, this is my my pleasure to quickly give you um, some updates on the legal framework on the plastic waste management uh, in Vietnam. Um, yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, um, and um, we will start with uh, the law. We will start with the law. Next slide. Yeah, uh, in the law, um, there are not only there's not only one but um, four uh, noticeable updates um, uh, regarding the waste management. Uh, firstly, uh, for the very first time, we have a circular economy that has been um, officially um, addressed uh, in uh, in a in a law, uh, giving orientation toward the application of redesign, recycling, and resource circulation. Secondly, waste uh, segregation a source, uh, which will be applied no later than um, 30th, uh, th 31st uh, December 2024. Uh, third is the service charge for the very first time um, will be based on the sorted amount of waste. And uh, lastly, um, the EPR, the extended uh, producer responsibility, which will be applied uh, um, uh, no letter um, uh, in, in uh, the next two years. The next slide, please. Uh, let's start with the circular economy. Uh, we have um, um, specified uh, the responsibilities uh, of different stakeholders here, uh, ministries, ministerial level agencies, and also producers. Uh, and uh, we're trying to uh, keep the balance between a top-down approach and bottom-up approach. Next slide. And in addition to that, we also uh, give some incentives and um, also uh, support, advice, giving guidance uh, for businesses uh, to go forward uh, uh, circular economy. Next slide, please. And um, uh, let me give you um, some updates on also uh, the EPR. Um, we, we, the EPR on... Uh, uh, recycling responsibility will be applied on uh, six uh, categories of products. Uh, the first group of uh, products will be uh, uh, applied um, is uh, oil and grease uh, on the 1st of January 2023. Uh, yeah, next one. And as you can see here, um, the organize, uh, organization of uh, EPR, uh, the producer can uh, choose, uh, they can uh, self-recycle um, the waste or they can outsource um, um, the work or they can also uh, assign uh, a representative as a PRO uh, to, um, uh, to uh, do the, um, to uh, hire some recycling units uh, to do the recycling work and also um, collection. Next slide. And uh, the EPR is applied not only on um, the um, uh, waste um, uh, recycling, but also the waste treatment responsibility. And the time of implementation is the 1st of January 20, uh, 23rd. And so we have uh, some types of products here. For the very first time, um, the cost norm uh, is identified uh, uh, clearly um, and uh, giving uh, good instruction uh, for implementation. Next slide, please. And uh, this is also the 
uh, organization of EPR on uh, waste treatment responsibility. As you can see, uh, uh, in this uh, case, Vietnam Environmental Protection Fund uh, will, um, will be assigned uh, to um, uh, do the uh, waste handling um, with the help of uh, a lot of uh, uh, waste uh, treatment units. Uh, in, in, this, um, in this case, um, a lot of business, Netherlands business can also uh, join uh, with help. Yeah, next slide, please. And apart from the EPR, uh, we, we also have some updated um, uh, on the, um, updated um, regulation uh, articles on um, uh, waste management, uh, plastic waste management uh, in particular, with very clear um, timeline and, um, and targets here. Next one, please. And also, um, after that, uh, we, we have some also updates on um, the this season um, uh, 1316, just a couple of, couple of months ago, uh, giving a specific direction and targets uh, on uh, single use plastics and also all kinds of uh, packaging pack, uh, plastic, the targets and also uh, the timeline. Next one, please. And um, and uh, I, I just want to end my uh, presentation here with uh, some uh, summary of the opportunities from cooperation. Um, uh, we, we, we can cooperate uh, on solidate, consolidate the legal framework and policy. We can also cooperate uh, in uh, giving advice to the local producer uh, on circular economy and EPR. And especially we can uh, cooperate on this recycling and waste treatment work. Um, and um, yeah, um, we are um, uh, looking forward uh, to work with you. Uh, welcome uh, to join us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nam. You definitely managed to give us so much content in so little time. And it's very clear now, I think, that from the regulatory perspective, there is really momentum for, uh, for change. There is momentum for action. So let's dive a little bit deeper. And our next speaker is Ms. Ha. She is the National Manager of Vietnam on behalf of the National Plastic Action Partnership Vietnam, NPAP. Ms. Ha, what's happening in Vietnam today and what are opportunities that you see? The floor is yours. Um, thank you very much, Frick. And again, thank you, uh, the organizer, for having me today. It's my honor to connect with uh, the whole, uh, Holland Enterprise and uh, sharing with you an overview of the plastic management landscape in Vietnam. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so today, today, I'm going to provide you with uh, some of the statistics as well as the overview of the um, uh, existing initiatives and stakeholders in Vietnam. And also, I'd like to share uh, some of the opportunity and challenge for business when investing in this sector. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to introduce about the Vietnam National Plastic Action Partnership. Um, we are under an umbrella of the, the Global Plastic Action Partnership hosted at the World Economic Forum. So as I would like to echo what Mr. Ewan has mentioned earlier that the clock is ticking and the time for action is now. So that is one of the mo motivation why SHIPAP and NPAP has established. We aim to create a public-private platform to connect stakeholders and bring and translate um, commitment into action through collective agenda and through joint solution. And Vietnam government joined the World Economic Forum and established uh, the Vietnam National Plastic Action Partnership a year ago. Next slide, please. So, our platform aims to serve as a public-private platform for all stakeholders in this domain and support uh, the coordination, the synergies, and the collective action uh, to achieve the government strategy and national target for sustainability and for circular economy development. Next slide, please. So we adopt uh, the global approach, uh, a systemic change approach to promote uh, circular economy for plastic in Vietnam. And we are pioneering in 
in this together with Indonesia and Ghana. So for first, we already developed a multi-stakeholder action roadmap, which is going to be published in the coming months. And we do not just look at the waste management value chain, but we look throughout the plastic value chains from the production to consumption to um, collection and disposals of plastic waste. So I will give you some highlight of our study later on in this presentation. Next slide, please. So over the years, we have built a strong coalition of over 100 stakeholders from across sectors, from the global level to regional levels, and especially uh, at the national level. So it's my honor to be here today and sharing with you about the achievement, the accomplishment of the NPAP, and invite you all to join the NPAP in supporting the people of Vietnam and the business community in Vietnam in this domain. Next slide, please. So here on the screen, you may see that this is a, a plastic stakeholder mapping that we try to uh, consolidate with the support of our NPAP partners and NPAP community. You can see that uh, plastic waste is one domain which is in within the integra uh, integrated management of solid waste in Vietnam. And also it is uh, under the overall development on circular economy in Vietnam. And Dr. Nam has shared with you about the ambitions of the government of Vietnam on create the transition from the linear economy to circular economy. So we have in this mapping, uh, so, uh, you can see the government agency also represented, uh, the private enterprise, international organization, NGOs, and as well think tank and institute also joined hand in this collective agendas and uh, proceed forward. Uh, so please take a screen capture if you may like, or later on, I think that you will have a, uh, a deep in-depth look at this uh, stakeholder mapping. But I have to say that with our study, with our uh, regular update of this mapping, we see there's a dynamic, there's a momentum from all of the sectors. And uh, based on our uh, recent uh, analysis, uh, over 300 million US dollar has been invested in averting plastic pollution for Vietnam. And that is both foreign driven and also locally driven investment. Um, so we may share with you a more detail if you, uh, you want to proceed forward with your, um, your, your market uh, expansion in Vietnam. Uh, next slide, please. So what are the situation right now? We, we may heard that Vietnam is one of the top four country with uh, the plastic pollution emitted to the ocean. According to our recent analysis, 3.6 of million tons of plastic has been generated in Vietnam each year, and only 11% is currently collected for recycling. That means there's a lot of uh, market opportunities to recover the value loss from those mismanaged plastics. Next slide, please. So in our study, we do look at the fate of Vietnam plastic generated in the baseline years of 2018. And also we generate the scenario for Vietnam, what will happen, how 2030 will look like if we do differently or if we maintain the business as usual. Next slide, please. So if we have more support, if more cross-sectorial collaboration will be enhanced, so we may reduce uh, the plastic leakage from Vietnam to 30, uh, 43% or even to 75% according to our analysis. So what are the opportunities for the business sectors? Next slide, please. So due to the time limit, I would like to share uh, here right now some of the opportunity and challenge as well for you, for your thought process and for uh, your future research when you want to expand and invest more into Vietnam. So we identify the key player to support us 
uh, with the system intervention and the focus action for enabling environment, those players are consumer goods industry, plastic industry, packaging alternative manufacturer, petrochemicals and plastic manufacturers, and also private company working on waste collection and waste treatment uh, One businesses. Minute, please. So for the opportunities, I think that for the Holland business, you may want to look at opportunity for advanced technology transfer for alternative materials production, recycling infrastructure and waste treatment facility. And especially with the agendas for development of policy and regulation right now, I think that we may welcome you to join the national level for cross sectoral planning and policy development via our NPAP policy and business dialogue. So uh, we may want to share more in the discussion uh, later on. And thank you very much for just listening. And over to you, Fred. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Ha, for this very comprehensive overview. I think it's very useful. And it's also clear to me that in both a realistic and, ambi and an ambitious scenario, there's a key role for business to play. So action is needed and it's inevitable. And as the Dutch always say, first movers have the biggest market opportunities. Um, now, there are many Dutch uh, entrepreneurs in the room, but where to start? How to find a Vietnamese partner? How to organize yourself? So we're extremely happy that we have Mr. Guido van Roy of the Dutch Business Association in Vietnam with us today to explain how you can do business actually in Vietnam. Guido, the floor is yours. Thank you, Freek. Good morning to everybody in the Netherlands. Good afternoon to those in Vietnam. Currently, I'm myself, I'm in the Netherlands, and it's an honor to, to join you all digitally in this uh, exciting platform that Holland Circular Hotspot has created. I wanted to just give you a brief introduction. I will keep it very short. I'm not an expert on this subject, uh, but I am someone that potentially could connect your business to businesses or institutions around Vietnam. And that's what I want to talk about. Next slide, please. So just very briefly about us. What are we? We are a non-profit business association, a bilateral uh, trade promotion organization that aims to promote trading ties between the Netherlands and Vietnam in a very broad sense. Over the last two years, despite Corona, we have grown considerably and we have grown from about, I'm going to say 40 members to right, right now about 115. Um, and we are proud to have welcomed Holland Circular Hotspot as our member uh, very recently, actually. Uh, this webinar was actually the, the, the reason that we actually made things work. So that is uh, fantastic. Um, so. What do we do and why is it special that we're here? Um, I think one of the special things about DBAV is that we have a very close relationship with the Dutch diplomatic network in Vietnam, also with NL in Business, the Dutch trade promoter, Vietnamese authorities, the Vietnamese Chamber of Commerce, and also the uh, European Chamber of Commerce. Um, all in all, that makes us quite well connected. And that's what I want to uh, uh, discuss more about in the next uh, slide. Yeah, so we have, that is, Good to mention how we see here on the bottom right is, for example, Carlo Richter. He's just moved to Dubai. Uh, he will be succeeded soon. There's Christoph Promersberger from, from Hanoi. They are formally involved with the DBAV in an advising role. And there are uh, uh, very senior board members to the DBAV. So that's what I just wanted to let you know. It's not just me, but it's actually 11 voluntary board members that are senior business leaders that care about Dutch business in Vietnam. Next slide, please. Uh, this is our mission. We want to connect people and knowledge to the best benefit of our members and new market entrants. And as such, uh, I think we fulfill this mission by, for example, helping Holland Circular Hotspot promote this webinar. Next slide, please. So what we do is we do on four types of, uh, the, the, let's say the, the DBAV table has four legs. One is the networking leg, uh, that is the community and organizing events being part of the community, trying to uh, unveil business opportunities. Um, the other leg of the table is information, and that's what we do. We share information on current affairs, trends, and developments. For our members, we have a weekly newsletter, and we have, um, for example, today also a COVID-19 webinar, which is usually very well attended. Uh, then thirdly, we have the advocacy 
foot where we aim to provide our members the options that they have. So we see ourselves as the spider in the web. So we, if you have a problem in Vietnam, you can turn to us and we will try to help you solve that with the authorities or with the help of another institute. And lastly, we offer business service. And business service is a very broad subject, but if you want to get into Vietnam right now, then we do that. But we also offer market researches, the visa, TRCs, and all kinds of uh, permit um, uh, services. Okay, so uh, let's go down to the chase. Next slide, please. Yeah, the signature events. I will skip that slide to keep the pace high for this uh, presentation. Next slide, please. Yeah, so this is actually what I wanted to bring to the table uh, today in this webinar. And um, so what, what are we? We are an association with many Dutch members and usually they are at the forefront of innovation and knowledge. And for example, I'm talking about Holland Circular Hotspot that has recently joined us, uh, but also Friesland Campina, Unilever, Heineken, Damen Shipyards, Clean Dye um, have very comprehensive CSR and uh, waste programs. Um, that is something that I wanted to bring up. Uh, and of course, I'm skipping companies here that, that, uh, uh, that may have uh, comprehensive programs as well. Uh, but I'm just saying that DBAV's companies in Vietnam are at the forefront of what we all here want to achieve, and that's to elevate the circular economy system. Um, so what do we do? For example, what we do for those businesses is that we match them with a uh, circular economy uh, um, and, uh, interested businesses, such as, for example, uh, uh, packaging and recycling organization Vietnam, uh, PE Tech, Vietnam Waste Corporation and Citenco are all part of our network. They may not be members, but they are part of our network. And we have set up meetings with them actually last year still. So Pro Vietnam is, for example, connected to the DBAV because, for example, Friesland Campina is actively, actively participating on that platform. And they have the ambition that all packaging made in Vietnam will be circular by 2030. And that's a long, long way to go. Um, so what I wanted to say is that they need Dutch solutions for Vietnamese challenges. Well, I was hoping that you were triggered by um, these statements from my side. And, um, and if, you, if you want to do more and you don't know where to start, hey, I'm looking at these slides and it seems all very systematic approaches. It's, I think it's difficult to set your first steps into the circular business in Vietnam. And perhaps it's, it's a good idea to join hands with Holland Circular Hotspot, join DBAV, set up a sector committee, for example, and start doing business with European companies and institutes, because they will usually be at the forefront of uh, what all of us want to achieve. Here. Thank you, Kido. That's what I wanted to bring. Thank you very much, uh, Vic. No, thank you very much. And we know that uh, a lot of Dutch companies uh, benefited from working with you in Vietnam. So keep up the good, uh, good work. Uh, as time is relentless, uh, we will go to a, a little question round with all the speakers with well, and roughly one minute answers from each. So uh, power pitch answers. And I will start with, uh, with Dr. Nam, please. Um, um, well, you showed us the governmental perspective. Um, if I would look at opportunities, what is expected or hoped for from Dutch businesses to support this upcoming legislation? Um, and what do you think are the advantages of Dutch, Dutch businesses in Vietnam? Could you give a short answer to that, please? Yes, uh, great question. Uh, firstly, um, regarding uh, what uh, Dutch companies can help uh, the government in uh, um, um, lawmaking and also uh, 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 decision making as well. Um, it's um, because uh, we are still in the process of uh, uh, revising uh, the uh, decree, uh, which is uh, the giving the um, uh, guidance for uh, the implementation of the law. And um, after that, we'll, we may have to uh, uh, spend another year on uh, the circular, uh, circulars, making circulars, uh, which, is, uh, which are the, the guide, guidance for the decree. Uh, so uh, we are in the law, uh, um, uh, in the legal making uh, process, um, and we need uh, international experience. Um, and, 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 and about that, uh, Dutch company can help. Uh, you can also, uh, send us uh, some um, good experience on circular economy and uh, EPR and also plastic waste manage management in general uh, for us uh, to consider to be, uh, to, to include them uh, in, in, in the uh, decree or in the circu uh, circulars later. 
And also um, Dutch companies can, can help us if uh, um, uh, in the process of uh, doing business in Vietnam, particularly on plastic waste management. If you find any difficulties, you can always uh, raise your voice and, and let us know if uh, uh, any issue happen and, and anything uh, that should be changed. That's very much appreciated. Uh, regarding um, the advantage, uh, sorry, um, um, if I made it too long, but uh, yeah, that's the second part of the question about the advantage of uh, Dutch companies. I think the first to be mentioned is the, the technology, uh, because uh, as you uh, may have seen in the slides I shown there, um, there are a, a lot of gaps that uh, Dutch company can, can join in the EPR. You can be the PRO, you can also be the uh, recycling uh, units, you can be also the waste treatment units. And, 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 and for that, uh, one um, very specific requirement is uh, the capacity, including the technology. Um, and and um, we, we really need um, uh, your good technology to help us. The second thing is um, actually mentioned by uh, Guido just now, uh, Dutch solutions for Vietnamese challenges. Um, we very much appreciate uh, your good solution for our challenges. And uh, lastly, experience sharing. Uh, maybe not uh, technology, may, maybe not something too new, but uh, your experience can help us, not only um, the Vietnamese company, but also the manager and decision makers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Nam. Um, a final question to, to Ms. Ha, and then we move on to the next part of the program. Um, let's look at the perspective of NPAP. Uh, if you were to put opportunities in, on a timeline, what would be the low hanging fruit and uh, opportunities nearby and what's more longer term opportunities? Could you give a quick one minute reflection on that? Um, thank you for the question, Frick. And uh, I'd like to echo some of the opportunity that Dr. Nam already mentioned on the participation of the business in supporting policy development in Vietnam. Uh, the government of Vietnam is now in the process for um, development of circular economies and uh, EPA regulations. So I think that as the industry is a, you know, you have a long history of experience and you have a real life uh, experience as well. So uh, I think that the government of Vietnam as well as the uh, business community in Vietnam will appreciate um, your uh, contribution. And for the NPAP, I think that practically speaking, I'd like to invite you to submit some case study, uh, some uh, successful story of your business. Uh, uh, you have been operated elsewhere, uh, either in Europe or in Southeast Asia country with similar uh, socioeconomic condition as Vietnam. I think that the case study and the uh, best practice uh, supported by the, the Netherlands company uh, can support us to inform the decision makers in Vietnam on how to best uh, um, uh, facilitate the transition for the local economies. Um, and and in, uh, for the long term, uh, I think that uh, uh, you should have more dialogue with the Vietnam uh, counterparts. Uh, and also we can support you. I think that uh, we can do more of business matching opportunity. Maybe uh, the NPOP Vietnam can collaborate with the Dutch Business Association to facilitate some of the networking and uh, business matching opportunities uh, like that. Uh, so we can uh, secure more uh, investment opportunities. And, and also you will have more understanding about Vietnam. Um, so you. I will be happy yep. to share some of the uh, supporting material after this meeting to all of the uh, interested um, stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you for this outstretched hand uh, for support and uh, collaboration. The phase Vietnam now is in, well, the devil is in detail. Nobody can do it alone, not the government, not businesses. We need each other and we need to make the network work. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to all speakers. You've provided us with so much content and uh, much to think about. Now, I will now make a bridge to the second part of uh, this, uh, this webinar, which is about collaboration opportunities for Dutch and Vietnamese business in Vietnam and showing actually best practices from the plastic waste management sector. Um, let's continue. Well, you know, circular economy is a system change. We can have the slides in the background again. 
Um, no one can do it alone. We need to collect plastic waste. We have to sort it, to upgrade it, actually apply it. And for that, we need to redesign products, set up regulation, communicate to households, invest, set up waste management infrastructure. Only together we can close the loop for plastic, as you can see in this illustration on your screen. That is why uh, in the second part, we will follow the value chain approach uh, for the next six presentations of five minutes each. We start with collection, sorting, recycling, and finally, how business can reintegrate the material as new product in the value chain. Now, remember, uh, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A uh, function. It's my honor now to invite the first speaker from multinational Unilever. Now, Unilever is seen by many as a front runner and it can be a catalyst for further collaborative action. Ms. Mai, Sustainable Business Manager at Unilever Vietnam will speak about product design and returns. Ms. Mai, the floor is yours for the next five minutes. Hello everyone, my name is Anne. I am the Sustainable Business Manager in Unilever Vietnam. So today I will work you through with us to row in together with Vietnam to our circular economy in plastic waste management. Unilever has been in Vietnam for 25 years. We have employed 1500 people and we produce 35 million products in every day. And which has been in most of the households in Vietnam. We are also voted as one of the best places to work in Vietnam. It has been a meaningful and proud journey for our last 25 years. To keep plastic in the loop by 2025, we need to enable the cycling of materials. We need to collect plastic waste. That's why we have set a goal to help collect and process more plastic bag catching than we sell. This includes sachet. So collect and process plastic waste in, is very important to us to show our responsibility with environment. That is why Unilever Vietnam builds the first public-private collaboration towards a circular economy for plastics waste management in Vietnam. The Memorandum of Understand was signed between the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment, Dow Chemical Vietnam, SCG and Unilever Vietnam. So the circular economy focuses on four key areas that to share knowledge, trend for technology, raise public awareness and promote policy dialogue. Unilever Vietnam has pilot a first ever segregation collection recycle model in Hanoi capital. We partner with a waste collector, Urenco, and local governments, aiming for changing waste segregation behavior of Hanoian citizens. So on the screen, you see this is the model of our collecting as source and how to return and reuse and recycling waste, which our partner Urenco will present to you in that part. And after eight months of the pilot projects, we collected 450 tons segregated waste, which is a really, really good result. And we really proud of that. And following that, we also want to educate more customers buying into the campaign and make them understand more about the recycling projects and recycling waste, we use them. So we have several campaigns following, like the Green Day to exchange for gifts with the waste, and music video which vivid and more attractive to uh, attract them more into the project. And also the social media and press release to reach out as many as customers as we can to tell them to buy in with us into recycling waste 
plastic waste. We are facing some challenges here as well. For example, the waste management system, which is inconsistent for segregating at source and collecting, which is the same with the policy implementation. And through our work, we recognize that local people have awareness of recycling and reuse plastic waste. However, they don't take much action on this. Therefore, Unilever Vietnam really hope that now or any future, our work will humbly be inspiring people to join hands and to take more action on protecting environments with us. So that's why we also need a good collaboration with all the stakeholders like public sector, own other companies, and especially local people together with us to deliver the circular economy in plastic waste management. And as one of the Africa proverbs, it said, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. This is all from us. Thank you. In the presentation of Unilever, she, uh, she pointed at the collaboration with the Urenco, so it would be very appropriate to, to give the floor to Urenco to show from their perspective what's happening in Vietnam on the ground in Hanoi. I give, it's an honor to give uh, the floor to Urenco, to Ms. Lone. The floor is yours, Ms. Lone. Right. Thay mặt cho Uenco thì tôi xin giới thiệu về công tác phân loại rác tại nguồn mà Uenco đang triển khai thực hiện trên địa bàn thành phố Hà Nội. Vì thời lượng ngắn nên tôi xin phép chỉ giới thiệu một số nội dung chính những hoạt động mà Uenco đã triển khai trong thời gian vừa qua. Nếu quý vị đại biểu nào mà muốn tìm hiểu nhiều hơn về dự án mà Uenco đang triển khai thực hiện thì có thể liên hệ qua ban tổ chức ạ. Đầu tiên thì như quý vị đã biết thì khối lượng rác thải phát sinh trên địa bàn của thành phố Hà Nội hiện nay vào khoảng 6.500 tấn một ngày và chủ yếu hiện đang xử lý bằng công nghệ cho lớp hợp vệ sinh dẫn đến cái tình trạng quá tải và cho lớp là đơn vị trực tiếp thu gom và vận chuyển rác thải sinh hoạt trên địa bàn 16 quận huyện trên 30 quận huyện thị xã của thành phố Hà Nội thì UN cô luôn chăn trở làm thế nào để có thể triển khai để làm thế nào để có giảm có thể giảm hiểu được cái khối lượng rác thải trên lớp thì năm 2020 Uenco đã triển khai dự án phân loại rác tại nguồn mục tiêu trong giai đoạn đầu thì là sẽ phân loại rác thải thành hai loại đó là rác thải tái chế và rác thải còn lại em ơi nhắc cái slide chị ơi nhắc 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 slide Tính từ tháng 9 năm 2020 cho đến tháng 3 năm 2021, trong vòng 6 tháng, thì, uh, anh Thái ơi, Thái nói rõ thôi một tí không ạ? Thì uh, UNCO đã thu thu gom được 350 tấn rác thải tài chế trên địa bàn quận Hoàn Kiếm, uh, trung bình khoảng 2 tấn một ngày, trong đó rác thải nhựa nó chiếm khoảng 35%, tính ra khoảng 150 tấn. Thì uh, khi triển khai dự án, next, next tiếp. Đây, như quý vị thấy là Uenco sẽ chia cái dự án của Uenco thì là giai đoạn đầu sẽ chia rác thải thành hai loại là rác thải tái chế và rác thải còn lại. Em có nhắc tiếp cho chị khoảng hai ba slide nữa. Các nguồn lực xã hội và các nhà tài trợ quan tâm đến bảo vệ môi trường cùng tham gia. Đấy là như quý vị cứ tuổi dậu rồi là Unilever Việt Nam. Uh, Liên minh tài chế Pro và Nestle Việt Nam cũng đã cùng tham gia triển khai dự án cùng với cả Uenco. Uh, đặc biệt thì là dự án đã nhận được sự quan tâm chỉ đạo từ chính quyền. Đấy là cụ thể là Ủy ban Nhân dân quận quận hoàn kiếm đã ban hành kế hoạch số 10 về việc triển khai chương trình quản lý phân loại rác, phòng chống rác thải nhựa và túi ni lông trên địa bàn quận hoàn kiếm từ năm 2020 tầm nhìn đến năm 2025. Nhận được rất nhiều sự đồng thuận và ủng hộ của các đối tượng phát sinh rác thải à, đã tuyên truyền hướng dẫn được cho tất cả các đối tượng trên địa bàn của hoàn kiếm đầu tiên là các đối tượng uh, lãnh đạo quận lãnh đạo phường và các um, 
Thank you, Ms. Lone. I think it's clear from the presentation that Urenco is a major player in Hanoi. Thank you for showing the reality of waste management uh, uh, that, you, that you're actually doing. I think that's very interesting for Dutch businesses and uh, you might be a perfect partner for them, actually. Um, time is relentless again, so I have to keep on going with, with the program. Um, what we have seen from some of the slides of your end is that, that working with the informal sector is uh, quite important. Um, and that's a nice introduction, I think, uh, for our next speaker from the Netherlands, uh, from Sweepsmart, Niels van den Hoek. Uh, Niels, is working with the informal sector capability that Sweepsmart has? Please enlighten us. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Freik. Uh, yes, that's uh, uh, that's exactly uh, what we are doing. Um, and I would like uh, to give you an insight in how Sweep Smart uh, can support you in realizing modern and efficient waste management uh, systems with an inclusive and economic perspective. Um, we started five years ago uh, with the motto, turning waste into happiness. Uh, at this time, this is still at the core of what we do and more relevant uh, than ever. Uh, happiness is only possible if a healthy economic growth goes hand in hand with social and uh, environmental pro progress. In other words, happiness can only thrive if everybody wins. Uh, therefore, our mission is to realize zero waste ecosystems that make economic sense, serve the community, save the environment and create jobs to, to be proud of, as you can see on this slide. Next slide, please. How are we doing that? I'm sure you are familiar with a picture as you can see on the top of this slide. This is an example of an enormous uh, landfill in Guwahati in the northern part of India. Uh, waste workers are working inefficient under bad conditions uh, while well, the waste is leaking into the environment. And in the end, they can only segregate the high valuable material because segregating the low valuables doesn't make economic sense. We believe this can be done more efficient by reinventing European best practices for upcoming economies, resulting in a clean environment and, job to be and jobs to be proud of. Next slide, please. So what do we do exactly? Uh, we support our clients and partners in every step towards realizing zero waste ecosystems, starting with defining the best waste management strategy or designing the right collection or processing systems. We help them to go from design to delivery by implementing the right structures, equipment and processes with close attention to quality, health, safety and environment standards. We ensure the team knows how to run operations independently before we leave. That's really important. Uh, but we can also work on optional improvements for existing and new sites. So if you have an operational site, you can also invite us to see if we can make it better. 
Uh, successful waste ecosystems can only be built in collaboration with local stakeholders. We work together and look beyond the technical details to ensure the system makes economic sense and creates a win for everyone. Next slide, please. Uh, I have a, uh, um, um, yeah, an, 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 the result of our intervention and it's for a small a center in the uh, city of Bangalore. Uh, it's a one minute video, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, I think this this is a this is an, an, an example of uh, waste pickers who were working uh, on yeah one of these landfills uh, uh, before, and they are now working under good conditions, and they have a job to be proud of. That's that, that's that's super important you, uh, for us. Um, Closing my presentation, um, we have a proven track record uh, with projects in India, Indonesia, and since one year, also two projects in, in Africa. Uh, thank you for your attention. And if you would like to improve and accelerate your zero waste management journey, uh, feel free to, to, to contact us. We, we would love to, uh, to come to Vietnam as well. Thank you. That was sweep smart, and your activities definitely seem to fit in the spectrum of needs of Vietnam. And little by little, we are progressing down the value chain, and now we're starting to turn waste into value again. So I'm now very happy to invite Mr. Tan to showcase solutions for mechanical recycling of plastics in Vietnam. Mr. Tan, the honor is yours. Với mong muốn được chia sẻ hợp tác trong lĩnh vực tái chế rác thải nhựa, tạo ra các sản phẩm thiết chốt đặc biệt của dây chuyền là gì và suy nghĩ về nó nhất ạ cái khó nhất là cái tỷ lệ phối trộn phối trộn được cái ví dụ như là bạn phải trộn bao nhiêu phần trăm là nhựa và với nhựa nguyên sinh PVC PVC sau đấy là đến cái quá trình tạo ra thì cái cái máy tạo ra thì nó cũng không phải là cái tạo hà thông thường mà nó phải dùng cái công dụng nói công dụng đấy thì anh em mọi người phải nhìn không mà mình phải cuối trộn nguyên liệu để tạo ra các ống nhựa nước thải từ rác thải mặt co thì đầu tiên mặt co PVC được thu gom sau đó công nhân sẽ sàng lọc chỉ chọn ra đúng Nhựa PVC, nguyên băm nhỏ, phơi khô, rồi đưa vào máy nghiền. Được như bên nguyên liệu khác, từ nhựa nguyên sinh học. Các hạt nhựa được tạo ra, và xung qua máy đủ một chục vít, các ống nhựa sử dụng cho thoát nước thải. Ống nước được tạo ra từ quy trình này, có thể sử dụng làm nước thoát nước thải, hoặc sử dụng Đóng giờ này thắn giá thành thắn tóc một cây là cây 200 nữa thì 4 mét rất dễ dẻ hơn được 80 ngàn Đóng giờ này thắn giá thành thắn tóc một cây là cây 200 nữa thì 4 mét rất dễ dẻ hơn được 80 ngàn Đóng giờ này thắn giá thành thắn tóc một cây là cây 200 nữa thì 4 mét rất dễ dẻ hơn được 80 ngàn
đầm nuôi tôm thì hiện nay có nguồn thải được tái chế từ chất thải mảng co còn được dùng tại các hệ thống tưới tiêu trong nông nghiệp, các nước thải trong các tòa nhà đem lại lợi ích kinh tế cho người dân. Thanh Hóa chúng tôi là một tỉnh thuộc khu vực Bắc Trung Bộ và có diện tích tự nhiên tới 11.133 km2 với dân số là đứng thứ thứ ba trong cả nước Việt Nam. Chúng tôi có bờ biển dài 102 km với 5 cửa sông và đây là nguồn phát thải nhựa đổ ra biển là rất lớn. Đây là làm hình ảnh rác ở bãi biển và rác ở cái nơi mà chúng tôi đang thu gom về. Đây là hình ảnh của một số cái cái, cái cái quy trình thu gom của chúng tôi. Và đây là hình ảnh sản phẩm của chúng tôi hoàn thiện. Đây nhà, trong nhà máy, hình ảnh máy móc để sản xuất ra sản phẩm. Em chào tiếp. Đây là sản phẩm đã hoàn thiện, chuẩn bị đem ra thị trường. Hiện nay công ty chúng tôi đang ứng dụng và hoàn thiện thành công các công nghệ sản xuất nhằm đa dạng hóa cái sản phẩm ống nhựa phục vụ cho việc thoát nước thải. Dự án mới này chúng tôi đã thực hiện thành công và đã tạo ra những sản phẩm mới chất lượng bao gồm ống nhựa cấp thoát nước, thanh ống tấm định hình, như phào chỉ trần nhà hay là ván nhựa, ván lát nền nhà, gạch giả gỗ, giả vân đá mở ra một cái cơ hội mới cho ngành vật liệu xây dựng tới đây là một số cái hình ảnh minh họa đây là một số sản phẩm đây là dây chuyền dây chuyền sản xuất ra ra sản phẩm nhựa mới đây là một số sản phẩm mà chúng tôi đã và đang sản xuất như cái tấm lát nền này, rồi là tấm lát ở trong nhà tắm này hay là khung tranh giả gỗ này hoặc là tấm lát sàn nhà It's gladly accepted. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tan. I think that you have showed us that already today in Vietnam, plastic is uh, turned into valuable building materials. Uh, and uh, we're very happy to hear that you're open for further collaboration with partners. So let's now uh, continue our virtual tour along the value chain. Now we know that front running countries like the Netherlands that roughly 50% of all plastics can be recycled mechanically. But what to do with the rest? Uh, of course, redesign is very important, but today and in the next year, we can't redesign everything. We can't design out waste completely. So lots of people talk about the potential of chemical recycling. Uh, we will explore an example of chemical recycling. Mr. Martin Stork from Ionica will show us a, a, a Dutch in invention, which is working at operational level in the Netherlands. Martin, can we have the honor to listen to your contribution, please? Thank you for the floor, Frank. Can everybody hear me? We hear you, yes. Perfect, perfect. Let me share my slides, put it on the big screen. So, um, here we go. Perfect. Uh, let me start with uh, giving a little bit of uh, background information by myself. I'm Martin Stoke. I'm a business developer working for Ionica now for two years. And I am basically the external face of the company. In, in my talk, I will be mainly focusing on PET as a plastic and um, uh, based on that I will give you a little bit of background information on the European situation because I know there most of the figures from and um, to give you a bit of uh, uh, concept of why chemical recycling for PET is necessary. So let's start with PET recycling in Europe. PET recycling in Europe um, mainly is uh, based on bottles, on soda bottles, Coca-Cola bottles, water bottles. And uh, if we look at the value chain, uh, we can see that only 5% of the Coca-Cola bottles or water bottles is recycled for a second time. What happens with the other 95%? A big portion is lost, almost 50%. It's lost in incineration, landfill, and waste to energy, even in Europe. Uh, a very big portion is also 
lost during processes of mechanical recycling. I'll come to that later. A uh, portion is exported uh, since some companies are not waiting to deal with very contaminated materials. And the last portion uh, is basically recycled down into products that are more challenging to recycle. So one can think here of PET fibers, polyester fibers. So uh, what are the limitations of mechanical recycling? Uh, currently, uh, the mechanical recycling really wants you to separate materials. So uh, you want to go for mono material, so no additives, no other plastics in it. You want to have no mixed colors in it because then the final product comes out a little bit off tone, which is not suitable then for any beverage applications anymore. And due to legislations here, people don't want you to use non-food material. Then a second aspect that is becoming more and more relevant is that by increasing the number of recycling percentages into your bottle, um, the re recycling um, cycles of the material will increase over the coming years. And what we see is that with every cycle of recycling, the material loses its quality. Uh, approximately six times it can handle it, but after that, um, the quality really degrades and you need additives, which are not food grade, to mark up or make up the quality of the material. Uh, and the last bit is that due to legislation, uh, we see that there's a high request for traceability of high quality materials, which is limiting the volumes, which is currently uh, increasing uh, the demand. So to come back to my company, what does Ionica do? What we do is we recycle the unrecyclable PET waste. And by doing so, we contrib contribute to a closed loop system for PET plastics. So currently we have a 10 kiloton factory operating in the Netherlands, where we take the waste streams of the mechanical recycling and we make a high grade monomer out of it. And based on our experience that we gain there and the patents that we have uh, established, our core business will be to license the technology out to other companies so that other companies can also benefit from our knowledge. So by doing so, what we want to do is we want to ambition, we have the ambition to go to 100% recycled content uh, with 75% less CO2 emissions, but overall we want to be price and quality competitive to the virgin product. So a little bit of history. We started in 2013 with the first lab scale uh, processes on the, on the uh, technology. And then every two years we have a technology milestone where we have uh, still the 2016 setup operational where we can do tailor-made equipment for any kind of feedstock that you're interested in. And we do have our commercial line, which is basically uh, dedicated to our clients. One minute, please. Yeah, sure. We have seen some different difficulties in the in the, the past 10 years. Size matters. Uh, we see that, uh, especially with the chemical industry. So um, first we thought one kiloton would be doing quite well. And then they, they said, well, go to 10. And now we see that the interest is growing further and further with the ambitions to go to 100 or 150 kilotons. Then the second challenge is transformations. During the last 10 years, we see the world changing dramatically. When we started, virgin was way more expensive than recycling and recycled PET was basically a uh, cost cutting solution for companies. And currently we see that the price of our pet is, uh, in, is double compared to virgin in Europe. But also other transformations you can imagine. Uh, I also heard the transformations that were coming up in Vietnam with the uh, legislation and all these things will impact uh, the business case over the coming years. And then the last challenge, which is a very important one, is where is the feedstock actually coming from, which is also defining basically the business case and how to set it up. So just a short bri a brief um, summary of Ionica again. Uh, currently, we have a unique and scalable process with a very low CO2 emission. Uh, we have the first 10 kiloton commercial plant operational, supplying the biggest uh, global PT manufacturer in the world, in the Rama. By doing so, we are endorsed by the big brands like Unilever and Coca-Cola. 
uh, our business model is eventually go to a licensed model. Um, and by uh, having a non-exclusive license, uh, we want to discuss it with the whole PT value chain. Um, and at the end, uh, we want to go further than PT and see if we can also uh, find solutions for other plastics uh, and make that uh, economical feasible. Thank you for your time. And uh, if interested, uh, connect me. Wonderful, Martin. I'm very curious to know from the Vietnamese audience what potential they see for chemical recycling and especially also when. Um, now we continue with our, our final speaker. Now, after waste is collected, sorted and recycled medically and chemically, we can make products out of it. Next to the example shown by Mr. Tan, we would like to share another example. And our last speaker is Jan Jaap Volmer from UP. And in Vietnam, he can be considered a Dutch first mover to jump to the opportunity to close the loop for plastics in Vietnam. Jan Jaap, what's I'm doing in Vietnam? Um, thank you, Freik. Um, my name is Jan Jaap Volmer. I'm the uh, founder of uh, UP Upcycling Plastic. Uh, up upcycling plastic is active uh, already five years uh, uh, from now in Vietnam. Actually, as a startup, we started to look for opportunities to work with uh, plastic wake, waste and recycle that in Vietnam. Uh, nowadays, we've developed a, a business model, um, the up circular plastic factory concept, uh, where we try to close the loop for uh, plastic waste. And we focus on the difficult to recycle uh, problem streams of mixed plastic waste. Um, and we want to do that uh, locally as well. So we use uh, locally sourced uh, mixed plastic waste, uh, the waste that normally ends up in landfills or uh, is being incinerated or worse ends up in our, uh, in our oceans. And we locally uh, manufacture that or process that into, um, uh, in, into uh, uh, construction materials for the local market. The products we make are recyclable themselves. So at end of life of the products we make, uh, we can take them back and um, uh, we can recycle them again. Um, so uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, so we do this with the upcircular plastic factory, which is a, uh, 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 we're using a technology from Australia. Um, and this is quite a unique and breakthrough technology because the machine we are uh, using is eating uh, unsorted, uh, unshredded and uh, unwashed mixed plastic waste. So we don't have to do any pre-work before we uh, uh, turn the bales of mixed plastic waste into our machine. And uh, in the whole production process, in the end, uh, we, uh, we get the planks, poles, uh, bricks, tiles, and other materials which we want to produce, we get them directly out of the machine. The uh, one, one production line has a uh, total capacity of between 5,000 and 7,000 tons per year uh, production, uh, production uh, capacity. It's a very energy and uh, therefore also cost efficient uh, process. We save up to 50% of the costs of the uh, standard processes to make planks and poles made from uh, recycled plastic waste. Uh, so therefore also the products uh, normally are very competitive in, uh, in, in the market. Um, and uh, this, is, this is due to the fact that we don't put the uh, whole machine, the melter on a standard temperature. Uh, next slide, please. Um, but we use friction, uh, uh, friction to warm all the different sorts of plastics towards their own melting temperature. So there is not one temperature at what we melt the whole of the uh, plastics. No, we melt every type of plastic at our own specific melting temperature. And the molten fractions are uh, together mixed. And uh, that means that we don't put pieces of different types of plastic together and uh, what is normally uh, used in, in conventional and existing technology. No, we mix actually the molecules. So to envisage this, you can imagine that uh, when you mix all these molten uh, frictions, uh, you create a sort of uh, uh, big hump of mixed spaghetti of different colors. And uh, that creates a, a very homogeneous and also strong uh, and high quality material very suitable to make, for example, the construction materials with which we, uh, with which we start. 
Um, so uh, this slide contains a little bit information about the uh, about, about the uh, about the te technology uh, and to just envisage it. Uh, the machine can just uh, use and, and take in uh, uh, carpet tiles, uh, but also fishing nets, uh, and we don't have to shred them or prepare them, etc. As long as we don't have whole uh, dead fishes in the, in the machine or uh, engine blocks, then uh, the machine will run uh, quite uh, quite smoothly. We can also uh, use uh, easily uh, multi-layer uh, uh, sachets uh, or uh, or drink packs um, that will uh, that will without any problem go through the through, through the process. Uh, and we even with 100% uh, uh, drinking packs, we can create a, a very metal-like uh, uh, or metal-looking uh, uh, product, uh, which uh, which which may have a, a nice um, uh, a nice application as well. So um, next slide, please. It's not only the technology which is uh, which is important, although our technology is quite uh, quite unique. Uh, it's it's also um, uh, a good local business opportunity. Uh, as uh, 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 Niels from SweepSmart already told you, uh, we don't want to operate the factories ourselves. Uh, we have to work together with local entrepreneurs, with local companies uh, to make this all happen. Uh, because um, if we want to set up something in, uh, in, in Vietnam, for example, uh, in, uh, in Hanoi, then locally it should be operated. Uh, there should be a connection with the local supply chain. Um, uh, there should be a collaboration with local stakeholders uh, and it's creating local employment. Uh, we work together from, uh, with, with the partners throughout the whole supply chain from the waste pickers on, on one end to companies that sell uh, construction materials on the, uh, on the other hand to make it happen. And uh, for us, that is very important. Uh, working together in a circular economy is the only thing that, uh, that works. And so we, we aim for an integrated regional supply chain solution for a regional solution so that every region, uh, locality or city uh, can solve its own West, uh, plastic waste problem. And uh, uh, we hope that we can help to do that, especially on the lower value mixed plastic waste, the problem stream of plastic waste. Next slide, please. Where are we as, uh, as up? Uh, at the moment in, uh, in the Netherlands, we are setting up a test and demonstration facility together with our uh, partner from, uh, from Australia and, and two other partners. Uh, this uh, facility will be operational uh, in two, three months from, uh, from now. Uh, actually, the machines are uh, in a container on a ship uh, from Australia to, um, uh, to the Netherlands as we speak. And we're very happy with, uh, with this. Um, and uh, after we've set up this uh, test and, and uh, demonstration facility, uh, we aim to set up uh, three or four production regional production facilities in the Netherlands as well, uh, because also in the Netherlands, the mixed plastic waste fraction is still a problem uh, because uh, most companies can't do a lot with it, and we can. Um, furthermore, in um, uh, a Dutch consortium, uh, we are setting up as well a production facility in Surabaya in, uh, in Indonesia. Um, there we work together with uh, a number of Dutch companies uh, who cover also the whole supply chain. SweepSmart is also one of them. The Ocean Cleanup is, uh, is one of them, also active in, uh, in, uh, in Vietnam. Uh, and we are there working together with a, a local partner, Piti Sumbajaya Pekaza from Indonesia, uh, to set up a production facility. Also using the same technology from Australia, from plastic recycling from, uh, from, from Australia. Um, and uh, we have the, uh, the first phase financing uh, is, um, uh, is, is in its last, uh, last stages. So we've started already with the preparation and the, and, and the feasibility. And we hope to be able to start construction uh, early 2022, so early next year. Um, in Vietnam, we're also uh, active, uh, also together with uh, a number of, uh, of, of Vietnamese uh, organizations, uh, Green Hub Vietnam, uh, Tan Vinh Cooperative in, uh, in, in um, uh, Haiphong City, uh, a cooperative that is also processing waste, uh, but also with SNV, um, uh, a, uh, an organization that helps us in setting up a project and getting all the local uh, uh, stakeholders also together on, uh, on this one and get it financed. Thank you. Start, yeah. Request for funding. Next slide, please. Well, this is the team and partners. Next slide. Working together is, 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 is key. So um, uh, here are a few of our partners and, uh, and friends mentioned. And um, 
then I thank you for your attention. So thank you so much, Lanyap. Uh, I think that even for the single use plastic that others consider unusable, we have found closing the loop solutions uh, till of course we have found a way to manage uh, uh, to phase it out. Now let's go back to all speakers of the, this, uh, this round and have a round of uh, questions. Uh, um, unfortunately, as we have only a couple of minutes left, uh, we can't redo the Unilever presentation, uh, which unfortunately due to technical glitches uh, could not be shown. We'll make sure to share it. Uh, and um, well, the summary basically is that uh, Unilever is trying to walk the talk, uh, has uh, in strong international ambitions and is starting a project with partnerships like Monroe and Urenco to actually create action. So. Uh, we're very sad that we couldn't show the, the work of Unilever, but please know that they're really trying to make a difference uh, here. Um, I will turn to my uh, hidden, uh, let's say, power from Holland Circular Hotspot, Lia, to select one question for a Vietnamese speaker and one question for a Dutch speaker, because that's all time will allow us. Lia, can I give you the floor for these two pledged questions with each one minute max answer? Yes, please. We have a very interesting question to Ms. Lohan. So how does the response of the local communities and household was during the public awareness campaign? And how does Urenko think they can involve the local communities and the households to improve the way they handle their waste? The first thing is that the plan has been received by the local community and the household. Và đi từ chính quyền địa phương này xuống đến ủy ban nhân dân các phường, các đoàn thể, từ um, các đoàn thể, từ dân phố đã tuyên truyền đến từng hộ dân và hộ kinh doanh. Và trên địa bàn quận Hoàn Kiếm thì hoàn toàn tất cả hộ dân và hộ kinh doanh đã đều biết đến dự án phân loại rác tại nguồn và đã triển khai thực hiện rồi. À, trong năm 2021 thì Urenco đang có kế hoạch là sẽ nhân rộng cái mô hình này lên và triển khai trên địa bàn 5 quận mà hiện nay là Urenco đang phụ trách trực tiếp thu gom rác ạ. Tôi xin hết ạ. Lia, let's have a question for a Dutch speaker, please. Yes, we also have a very interesting question for SweepSmart. And the question is, um, can you also share how to treat huge quantities of low plastic waste? For example, plastic bags or food containers, garments, and other commercial non-recyclable plastic waste materials. How we can process it? Was that the question? Yeah, how, how you can treat these quantities if they are also included in the operations you do with Smeep Smart? Yeah. Um... We have just developed uh, a solution, uh, a, a large scale a solution, uh, and there uh, we are uh, looking for uh, the uh, perfect balance between a mechanization and uh, a manual uh, uh, picking. And that's, uh, that gives you the opportunity to handle uh, different types of waste. And so we will we will design uh, our sorting equipment in such a way that we are able uh, to to process the uh, the large streams automatically and the, the like the disturbing the disturbing uh, materials in the waste we will do it manually so we are quite flexible uh, with our our sorting sorting systems Thank you so much uh, for the, the answer, uh, Niels, uh, from, uh, from Sweet Smart. Uh, unfortunately, we have come to the end of the, 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 the webinar. Uh, please remember that other questions have been asked uh, in the Q&A box. Some have been answered. Please have a look there. Uh, when sending around the presentations, we will also share the answers to the questions which have been answered and the ones which are still open. So nothing will be lost here. I think that uh, today we have had some great presentations that gave insights in the reality of plastic waste management in Vietnam. We have seen that enterprises are actually working on a future reality as circular plastic uh, sector. Um, we have in the earlier presentation, we have seen how the Vietnamese government is changing its legislation to support the change and is eager to enable the private sector to move in. It's time for action, it's momentum. Uh, and we can only do that by collaborating together. Um, and only together we can close the loop. And we've seen this actually, it's already happening today. 
we have seen that there are many opportunities for Dutch Vietnamese business coalitions. And actually the, the, the attitude is that they're quite open for it, that we need each other. Uh, we have seen that enterprises like Up are already successful in, in Vietnam. So to summarize, I think that we share the same vulnerable Delta environment. Uh, we are both very entrepreneurial nations. Uh, and I think together we can make a difference. Together we can find solutions for global challenges. Uh, so the follow-up, uh, as said, ever all the material will be shared uh, uh, on, online. All the questions will be answered that have not been answered yet. We hope we have reached our object, uh, objective to introduce the plastic waste management landscape in Vietnam and map the opportunities for circular business collaboration. Uh, if you have more questions, please do not hesitate to, to contact us. Uh, I want to thank, of course, the Embassy of the Netherlands uh, in Hanoi. I want to thank the Dutch Business Association in Vietnam and the Netherlands Enterprise Agents for setting up this webinar with us. Uh, thank you for your attention. It was a pleasure having you with us. To be continued. Thank you very much.